presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Al in Tampa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. I mean, if your listeners don't get the gold report, they're, uh, they're missing out. I mean, you're... With your gold report, you just print in money. I love it. Uh, you're my best dad out there, Al. Let's go to uh, Jeff in New Jersey. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Great. Uh, hey, listen, I was calling to thank you. Uh, a few weeks ago, you were prompting on your show to fill out that uh, $10,000 uh, grant. Yes. So I filled it out, and um, just a couple days ago, I found $1,000 in my business checking account. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, I owe it to you, because it, uh, if it wasn't for your prompting, I, I would have just assumed, you know, no way I would have gotten anything. So I, I wanted to thank you. No, we appreciate you growling a problem with us here. No. Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. He will be back Monday. Let's take a look what we got going on. Well, first, it's December. That's phenomenal. We'll talk a little bit more about what we have going on here at TFNN in December. Let's take a look at the markets first. We have the ES trading up 0.42%. We have the Russell Futures trading up 2.37%. Uh, NQs at 0.16, Dow futures at 0.7. We have gold. Gold has made a phenomenal move recently. Uh, currently trading at $2,089 uh, on the gold contract itself. One of the biggest winners, we were looking at it uh, in the den. It's down a little bit today, but look at this immense move. I mean, we're, this is Vista Gold. Okay, we've, we've had uh, Fred Ernest, the CEO, on a few times. Um, let's take a look at this. At least on the weekly, some massive movement and some pretty strong volume uh, going up as well. Uh, this stock was kind of lagging behind a little bit with the rest, uh, while the rest of the gold contract was moving up, uh, but it finally took off. So that's pretty neat to see. We have silver trading it uh, up about 0.78% right now. Copper contract uh, up 1.62%. We have crude. So there's been a lot of talk going on with crude recently, uh, especially regarding potential cuts that OPEC plus. Uh, we'll be making. We'll talk a little bit about it today. As uh, one of the headlines was that the OPEC Plus members have agreed on additional output cuts, and then so then you ask why is the contract going down? We'll talk a little bit about what investors, uh, how they're kind of digesting that information, and kind of the whole sit rep of that situation in general. We'll get to that. Tesla trading about flat right now at two thirty eight forty. Four. Elon made some uh, big headlines recently uh, regarding his visit to Israel, prior comments uh, regarding that situation, and then what he said about Bob Iger recently. Um, some people are considering, or at least taking the kind of downtick in Disney as a kind of consequences of Elon's comments, but I'm not sure how accurate that is. Uh, needless to say, Disney is trading down uh, we were trading about at our highest here, about 96.59. This was sweet, uh, especially if you were a Disney bag holder. But we're traveling back down here uh, to 92.33 currently. We have the dollar trading at 103.26. So some really nice down movement, at least over the past uh, month in it. Uh, we had an uptick uh, yesterday and the day prior as well. Uh, but we'll see if we can move down here in the dollar, the QQQ is trading at 389.78, Google at 133.16, Meta at 324.78, and Apple at 191.10. All right, let's talk a little bit about the crude oil. I spoke about, uh, I think the last time I was on, or maybe two times ago, how OPEC plus, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia uh, was really the influencer in this, um, but they were talking about reducing uh, oil output. Okay, this is obviously going to increase the prices uh, for the rest of the world. America produces the most oil for sure, but of course you have this whole mixed bag uh, with with Russia, Saudi Arabia being the top three after that, uh, and then a handful of others as well. Uh, this kind of obviously reduces the supply, increases the price, um, and then we're you know moving into winter uh, in the West, and, and so this kind of can can cause some issues, essentially, right? So talk a little bit on this. The OPEC Plus Group 
on Thursday agreed to additional output curbs of 1 million barrels per day. OPEC Plus, I believe OPEC is the, uh, the Gulf nations. OPEC Plus, I think, adds Russia and Mexico, and I think one more after that as well. Uh, but Russia and Mexico being the biggest players added in OPEC Plus. Uh, the OPEC Plus group on Thursday agreed to additional output curbs of 1 million barrels per day in a move aimed at sending prices higher. The deeper reductions come alongside an extension of Saudi Arabia's unilateral reduction of 1 million barrels per day. Uh, the move was confirmed by delegates at the meeting of the Coalition of Oil Producers and their Allies. A lack of mention of additional cuts in the official press release following OPEC, OPEC Plus's meeting led traders. So this is this is why we have some downward movement in it. A lack of mention of additional cuts in the official press release following OPEC Plus's meetings uh, led traders to believe those reductions were voluntary and not reductions to official requirements. Okay, the quotas for each country announced individually. So when there was discussion before this meeting, this was kind of sending the prices up a little bit. Um, of course, not too much because there's a lot of uncertainty with it. Um, and now the fact that there was not an official release uh, kind of has traders looking at, is this really going to be a long-term thing? Uh, and will it even be seen through? We'll see here, the West Texas Intermediate futures sank more than 2%, close 75.96 per barrel. The Brent crude international benchmark price settled at 82.83. And of course, Brazil is also joining OPEC. I was talking a little bit about the potential for Venezuela uh, to be joining the scene in selling their oil abroad if they could uh, secure a safe democratic election. Well, it turns out um, <laughs> that might not happen. There, there is some conflict going on with Suriname, which is a neighboring country to Venezuela. And I guess the government is trying to push the country into a conflict with Suriname. At least that's kind of what the headlines uh, and some of the stories lead us to believe. And that would obviously uh, dampen kind of any expectation for Venezuela. I would say getting into the, the world scene in, in a major way and adding another producer to the market, which of course would add uh, to supply. We'll see what happens. We'll take a look today. What did I? Oh, yes. But look at Pfizer. So, okay. They were having some issues with their stock price uh, because COVID is virtually over, at least in the public perception. Uh, not as many uh, vaccines are being purchased. They had a pop-up, um, I think around this day here, uh, on kind of news about a new cancer treatment. Excuse me, excuse me, not cancer. We'll talk about that. Uh, weight loss treatment. Okay, so you've been seeing a lot of companies, uh, Eli Lilly, some others, um, pushing these kind of uh, weight management pills, right? Uh, these are continual use pills. Uh, regardless, uh, they got cleared for FDA use. It's like Wagovi um, for obesity uh, management. So Pfizer was pushing that they're going to have a twice a day weight loss pill as well. Um, this kind of had the stock rebound a little bit. However, it seems that they've actually uh, stopped testing on it and studying on it because uh, there are adverse side effects. Uh, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. I want to talk a little bit about that and also talk about some of the side effects with Wagovi and uh, Novo's uh, weight loss pill as well. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. Call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. Before we went to the break, we were talking about Pfizer. They're down 5.48% today. Uh, they're Weight loss pill is being discontinued. It's not going to reach phase three of clinical trials, so that will not go to market. Oh, I'll talk a little bit about that, just some more before we move on. Of course, you have Novo Nordis, which is Wagovi and Ozempic. I think Eli Lilly's is Manjaro. Um, what Pfizer was doing is they had something that the mechanism was similar to Novo Nordisk's um, pharmaceuticals, right? It, it blocked some kind of enzyme in the gut. Um, excuse me, produce an enzyme in the gut and that mimics when an individual is full. What happened is people were taking this. Uh, it was statistically significant, the weight loss uh, compared to placebo, but what occurred uh, was a lot of adverse side effects. Um, it, this is something I've, I've been concerned about with like Wagovi and Ozempic, right? Uh, you have you know muscle wasting from some of these drugs. Uh, I know uh, hair becomes brittle in some circumstances. Um, so it stands to see how long these kind of stay on. Uh, supposedly, Novo Nordisks didn't have as many issues in, in trial uh, as Pfizer's did. Uh, so it kind of stands to see, but it's very interesting, uh, I think, just to kind of talk about. Folks, before we go on, we are in December, and every December, we do the TFNN Holiday Tiger Dollar Sale. You take a look over here. Such what these are, you can buy these. These go towards any product, service, or newsletter that you buy from TFNN. $500, you get 600 Tiger Dollars, which is 100 bonus, 20%. Uh, $1,000 gets you 1,300 Tiger Dollars, that's a 300 bonus, or 30%. And then 1,500 to 2,100 Tiger Dollars, $600 bonus, 40% bonus on that. So essentially, you get these, you get automatically applied to your account, and uh, you can use them towards all purchases on TFNN. And we got you Tiger Mugs as well. And now we've been working in the lab to figure out the most efficient way to mail these to people to get you into one piece, and I think we found it out. So you sign up today, get some of these Tiger Dollars, whichever one makes sense for you. Uh, you get a little bit of uh, some bonus money going towards any kind of service newsletter you get, and you get a great Tiger mug. That is cobalt blue for the people asking out there. So I'll throw this in the den as well at the end of the show today if you are interested. We'll switch back. And to talk about from some pharmaceutical companies, uh, AbbVie and Immunogen uh, have blown up recently. Let's take a look first at Immunogen. So we had some high, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty significant 
movement, right? You had a high here on the last day of 1661, some massive volume really woke this stock up. Going all the way up to 29.44, we are trading at 29.16 currently. What's occurring is that AbbVie is buying Immunogen for 10.1 billion, uh, and that's giving access to Immunogen's uh, ovarian cancer treatment, which is pretty solid. We take a look at AbbVie right now as well. So some decent leg up as well, not on such immense volume, uh, but for Minogen holders, that's pretty solid. Uh, Minogen's share skyrocketed over 80% in early trading Thursday after AbbVie agreed to buy the rival biotech firm for $10.1 billion to expand its cancer drug portfolio. The agreement will have AbbVie pay $31.26 per share for Immunogen, a whopping 96% premium to the closing price yesterday. Uh, the transaction is expected to close in the middle of next year, and AbbVie noted that it expects the deal to be accretive uh, to earnings per share in 2027. The acquisition gives AbbVie Immunogen's flagship cancer medicine, Elahari, a antibody drug conjugate to treat platinum-resistant ovarian cancer. Okay, so that's pretty big, uh, pretty big news for people who are holding Immunogen. I know some people in the den talk about it. Um, give great insight to that. Again, I say it every time, but if you're not in the den, you gotta get in it. It's $1, you know, you don't have to let it bother you throughout the day, but it's just some really uh, great insight going on there. I know Tom was talking about some ABC movements uh, in the SPY as well. So, you know, you wanna get in there and kind of check that out. All right. So some big news with what happened with Black Friday is uh, a lot of people spent, uh, which was kind of surprising to me, actually. Um, you had a record of 200 million shoppers turned out between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. This is according to the National Retail Federation. Um, this season, holiday spending is expected to reach record levels totaling $966.6 billion. And that, again, is the National Retail Federation projecting that. Now, you're kind of asking, right? Like, things are getting tight, Okay. Um, consumer prices aren't necessarily coming down in such an extreme way. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. One of the senators uh, from Pennsylvania actually released a uh, paper, uh, I think it was a few days ago, talking about kind of how these consumer prices aren't going down. Uh, you know, we hear things from everywhere, how people are using credit to keep buying food or buy extra stuff. So what's going on? What's, this is being called, you know, I'll throw this article over here, is doom spending. Okay, I actually do see a lot of people in my gener generation doing this. It's like a way, uh, honestly, to cope with stress, I feel like people engage in this, right? Obviously, it's not good discipline uh, with your personal money management, uh, but it does occur, right? Uh, what do they call that? When, uh, like shopping therapy or something like this? I know that was pretty uh, common throughout, uh, you know, the past decade. It's kind of like a meme online, but we're kind of seeing it expand. And this is what some of these researchers are seeing this kind of purchasing during this holiday season as, okay? So consumer spending has remained remarkably resilient in the face of some stiff economic headwinds. Nearly all Americans, 96% to be exact, are concerned about the current state of the economy. And that is occurring to the recent report by Intuit Credit Karma. Still more than a quarter are quote, doom spending, uh, are spending money despite economic and geopolitical concerns that the report found. Even as inflation and high interest rates have squeezed budgets, this is what we were talking about just a moment ago, a record 200 million shoppers turned out between Black Friday and Cyber Monday. They expected this holiday season to spend almost a trillion dollars. Jeez. Much like doom scrolling, we're seeing people mindlessly shop to soothe concerns about the economy and foreign affairs, which could take a toll on their financial well-being. Uh, even as credit card debt tops one trillion, Gen Z and millennials are particularly susceptible to this mindset, other reports show. Rather than cut expenses, 73% of Gen Zers say they would rather live in the moment. Okay, I, this is super interesting to me. Why haven't we seen this with past generations, right? Like my great grandparents yeah, went through the Great Depression. Uh, that was, I mean, my great granddad was in like bread lines and stuff like that outside of Chicago. And that's just like as, as dismal as you can kind of get, right? We're not necessarily there. Yeah, of course not. It's not even close. We sell food. Yeah, things are very expensive. It's maybe hard uh, to buy homes for a lot of people. Uh, you know, maybe there's a lot of, you know, offhand purchasing, stuff like that, excuse me, off-market off purchasing. But it, I, I wonder, like, the psychology behind all this. Like, why my generation and the guys below me do this kind of stuff? And I don't know if it's that we were kind of raised 
I think, like, I, I look back to my childhood and, you know, it was still like we would still go outside and play around and everything like that. We had that. But so much of what we did uh, was so many experiences we had uh, were kind of behind paywalls, right? Like we, we had to buy Xboxes and buy video games. Our parents do that. You know, we bought uh, tickets to go places. I know that's that's been the ticket point has been around for a long time. But I wonder if like we've somehow associated the concept of like being cozy and comfortable uh, with with consumerism, essentially. I, I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm kind of just hashing that out as I'm thinking about it. Uh, but it's interesting uh, nonetheless, especially with Gen Z millennials not really having that much money uh, to see them spending more and more uh, is it's pretty intense. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Look here, sorry, I was just getting an article set up here. Let's take a look uh, first. You know, we were talking about uh, prices, consumer prices still remaining somewhat high, right? Um, they obviously have come down quite a bit. Uh, one of the senators from Pennsylvania, not this year, uh, he released a report. Okay, now I, I think there's probably some, maybe like political bias in in the report, um, which you know, just as as an individual, you have to kind of pick through and see what you want to take and keep. But some of the numbers are there, and I think the the models are interesting. And he's saying, this is Bob Casey. Uh, he's saying that greedflation. Okay, essentially when 
corporations are still raising the prices of some products, uh, even if the, the input uh, on those products hasn't really increased, uh, is, is causing a lot of uh, extra expenditure for American families, at least in Pennsylvania families. Um, I'll, put, I'll put the whole release in the den, it's a PDF. Um, but I just, I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, you had a lot of larger uh, companies speaking about this, excuse me, larger news outlets speaking about this uh, as well. You're seeing an average family leases lease in Pennsylvania paid uh, $31.94 in 2021 and 3546 extra in 2022. And he and his uh, group are claiming that this is just from corporate profiteering. Um, I can put the whole PDF in it. It's just interesting to talk about um, not really giving credence to him uh, or his you know, position or cabinet or whatever. Of course, I live in Florida, so I don't know much about him. But I thought uh, it was kind of interesting that we have some senators uh, posting stuff like that. We'll take a look here. Um, let's take a look at Apple first. So we have some news coming out with them that they uh, are reportedly discussing uh, bundling with Paramount Plus uh, to create kind of a competition against Netflix. Apple is trading at 191.15 currently. It says it's in a move that might send shockwaves to the streaming industry, quote unquote. Uh, Apple TV Plus and Paramount Plus might be joining forces to take on the fight to Netflix. I, I just... Um, you, we've had a lot of companies coming out and trying to get into the streaming game. Um, you know, you had Peacock, which is uh, one that's kind of gaining traction now. Tubi was interesting. Uh, if, you, if you haven't heard of that, basically what it does is just offer a lot of free, like, B-list movies from, like, the 70s and 80s. Uh, you know, some modern ones as well. And that's a unique take on some things. Uh, but I, I just think I get nervous seeing some of these new uh, kind of streaming companies come in because I just think it's really hard to compete. I mean, you can look at Disney. They, they did pretty well uh, initially uh, with Disney Plus, uh, but, you know, they've been having some issues with it going forward, right? And you kind of ask this question. I mean, it's expensive to subscribe, you know, to Netflix, Hulu, HBO, Apple, you know, Disney, all these. You see what I mean? Uh, it, it just becomes just kind of pricey at a certain point to where you're going to have a lot of people who are just going to select, you know, uh, one or the other, Right. And so this might be an interesting move for Apple TV, at least, um, to kind of kind of bundle up, essentially. Uh, people familiar with the discussions reportedly told the Wall Street Journal that Apple TV Plus and Paramount Plus aren't just looking uh, to compete against Netflix itself. Um, they're just essentially also uh, looking to kind of dominate the rest of the market entirely. So I think it'll be kind of interesting to see how that plays out. Um, I, I don't know if this is going to just be a massive kind of money sink. Uh, for Apple and Paramount. I still think Netflix is extremely dominant. Uh, they've been spreading out to, you know, it's really their original releases that they're doing. Uh, I know in India, which, you know, the most populous nation on earth, they have Netflix India, and they're making uh, very unique uh, kind of shows that are targeted directly towards uh, that demographic there, uh, which, you know, is massive for the bottom line of that company as a whole. Something that's kind of interesting to talk about. You pull up here. And some other news as well. We have Google and Symphony unveiling there's an AI now to help banks manage voice calls and compliance risk, which I think is also pretty interesting. We're still moving forward with really intelligent uh, AI. I have some friends, one of them is working on kind of just like a general bot. He ripped like an API from chat GPT-4 and it kind of takes like uh, a little bit of the restrictions off of ChatGPT, if you will, right? Another guy we know, he's uh, been traditionally like a network admin and security professional, but he's training AI now for a, a very large company. Um, and he's saying this kind of stuff, the, the potential, one, I mean, for people to kind of, you know, lose their jobs, but then two, uh, to generate even more income for these companies is massive. Let's take a look a bit at this a little bit. Symphony, the market's infrastructure and tech firm, is teaming up with Google uh, to ramp up its voice analytics offering to banks and investment firms. Uh, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission has imposed more than $2 billion in fines for missteps in this space, largely linked to the failure to track or record business-related text messages sent over unauthorized platforms during COVID-19 lockdowns. Uh, as the sector-wide crackdown on messages and emails reaches a climax, financial firms are now bracing for possible probes into their usage of voice and video calls, so essentially... When you apply this AI, ideally, it doesn't make all the same mistakes as uh, your analysts do. So that's uh, kind of interesting to see that move forward. And I really think, too, uh, you know, Google has done this a little bit with Bard, but even one that, 
you know, my two buddies are kind of working on, uh, what it does is, you know, it, it, with ChatGPT4, you kind of have to talk with it, right? Like, say you wanted to act like a certain person, you have to constantly remind it, you have to constantly train just this one session because it doesn't have a carryover memory of anything that's going on. You train this one session to behave a certain way, right? So, you know, like when I'm studying uh, for stuff like, you know, in networking or cybersecurity, right? And there's not a, there's a concept I'm kind of having a difficult time with, or like, say, uh, I'm trying to like run, you know, let's just say like, uh, just test the security of a system, right? And maybe I'm not entirely sure how I want to go about doing that. I asked ChatGPT, right? ChatGPT doesn't want to give me that information because it can, you know, be used in a negative kind of way, uh, you know, from bad actors. And so what using this GPT API does is essentially takes that off to where it'll kind of just tell you um, what you want. Um, you can make these individual kind of units always forever behave this specific way instead of every time coming back to a new session, going through the laborious process of trying to get the AI to behave how you want, um, and then you know only to lose that when you're all done, uh, which is kind of interesting to me, I think. And, and really going forward, you know, you, you look at this from like, uh, you know, a, a personal perspective, right? Um, you know, having a personalized AI that can help you, you know, figure out maybe what you're spending too much money on, you know, figure out y maybe what decision is the best one to make in kind of a, a, a new realm, I think is, is really interesting. And I think we're going to see that a little bit more with Bard going forward. And having AI assistance in businesses is obviously massive as well, because you kind of cut down on, uh, on human error, right? Which I think is, is interesting. We'll talk here about uh, the U.S. home prices. We have the growth, at least for September, at 6.1%. This is the FHFA. Uh, home prices rose 6.1% on a year-over-year -year basis in September uh, from an upwardly revised 5.8% increase in the prior month. On a quarterly basis, annual house prices increased 5.5% between the third quarter of last year and the comparative period this year. Home prices rose 2.1% in the third quarter compared to the second quarter of this year, reflecting the reacceleration since June that has taken place following a period of softness in the market. Okay, and we are seeing a decrease in mortgage rates as well. Um, you have a small drop, uh, still, you know, it's to see if, if this is really gonna latch buyers on. Uh, we'll talk a little bit of that when we come back. And the average rate on a popular 30 year, at least right now, has uh, gone down to 7.22 from 7.29. Obviously, you have uh, the 10-year yield going down as well, but you had some Fed conversation that rate hikes might not be over yet, and it's premature to talk about cuts. Folks, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. 
That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We're talking a little bit before we went on the break that it might be uh, kind of, quote, premature to conclude um, that uh, rates might be going down. This was from uh, Jerome Powell earlier today. We'll read through this a little bit. He offered new warning to investors who believe the Fed is finished raising rates and will soon pivot to cutting, saying the central banks need to see more evidence that inflation is on its way back to the Fed's 2% target. This is a quote. He said, it would be premature to conclude with confidence that we have achieved a sufficiently restrictive stance or to speculate on when policy might ease. Powell said that earlier today. Uh, the comments follow a fresh read on the Fed's favored inflation measure. Uh, the core PCE index uh, that showed inflation continues to slowly come down. The core PCE clocked in at 3.5% uh, for the month of October, uh, down from 3.7% in September. Again, continuing a downward trend from 4.3% uh, back in June. Yeah, it's interesting. One of the things he also said, which I thought was unique, because I don't think the Fed usually talks about fiscal policy, but he said that we're currently uh, in an unsustainable fiscal path as well, which I thought was interesting. Um, obviously, debt's increasing compared to like total GDP, uh, you know, numerically speaking. And I was curious of like what that was coming from. And I did find uh, a report from the Treasury. Now, this is an executive summary from the fiscal year of 2022. This is a financial report of the U.S. government, and it had the same headline. Is it an unsustainable, excuse me, unsustainable fiscal path? Uh, this is basically just saying we're trying to have, you know, citizens under, kind of understand what we're talking about. They go here to say uh, this re uh, report presents data, including debt as a percent of GDP to help readers assess whether current fiscal policy is sustainable. The debt to GDP ratio is approximately 97% at the end of fiscal year 2022, down from approximately 100% at the end of fiscal year 2021. Long-term fiscal projections in this report are based on the same economic and demographic assumptions uh, that underlie the SOSI. So then they say the current fiscal path is unsustainable. To determine if current fiscal policy is sustainable, the projections based on the assumptions discussed in the financial report assume current policy will continue indefinitely. Okay. The projections are therefore neither forecasts nor predictions. Nevertheless, the projections demonstrate that policy changes need to be enacted for the actual financial outcomes to differ uh, for those projected. I'll post this in the den too. This is the chart five here. Uh, historical and current policy projections for receipts, non-interest spending by majority, excuse me, major category, net interest and total spending expressed as a percentage of GDP, primary deficit, is the difference between the non-interest spending and receipts. The ratio of the primary deficit and the GDP is used for gauging long-term fiscal sustainability. Essentially, just our debt ratio is really high uh, to, to total GDP. And they're saying if nothing changes on the long term, uh, that that is apparently unsustainable. Okay, I, I know that's a conversation that a lot of people have. Um, you hear it on different news outlets. You probably hear it on Facebook, too, from people. Um, but it was interesting... Uh, you know, seeing this Treasury report on it and then also hearing like Powell bring it up today as well. Because, again, I, I'm not sure that uh, the Federal Reserve usually talks about uh, fiscal policy. Anyways, I thought that was kind of neat. 
um, to read a little bit about and, and see some just more insight. And it's so good when you can actually, you know, I, I mean, find something from the actual source, right? Instead of listening to someone's like, opinion on it, um, of course, that, that has its positives as well. But um, there's so many like talking heads nowadays that have uh, different motives for why they're telling you something. So if you can read it, you know, from the actual people themselves, uh, I think that's, that's really awesome. And it's out there. You just kind of have to look for it um, a little more. So let me see here. Okay, we'll stick with some tech news as well that I wanted to talk about. Um, we've had a chip ban going on in China. It's, it's really being enforced recently as well. And so Huawei is trying to figure out a way uh, to try to, you know, essentially be self-sufficient. This is one of the big things that COVID showed us is that uh, s some of the ways that the global market um, are, are kind of integrated can sometimes be national security issues, right? And I, I talk about that a lot at least with Huawei here, saying they're allegedly building a uh, self-sufficient chip network using state investment funds. And the Bloomberg's report suggests a symbiotic relationship between Huawei and these enterprises. Uh, we've seen Huawei surprising strides with the recent smartphones, especially the in-house seven nanometer 5G processor within, but apparently the company has been working on something far more significant to bypass the US import ban, uh, excuse me, import ban, According to the new Bloomberg investigation, the Shenzhen City Government Investment Fund created in 2019 has been helping Huawei build a self-sufficient chip network. Such a network would give the tech giants access to enterprises, most notably the three subsidiaries uh, we don't need to really know the name about. Uh, lithography, especially the high-end extreme ultraviolet flavor, would usually have to be imported into China. And this is what you see coming out of, uh, you know, say the Netherlands, right? It's currently restricted by, okay, U.S. Netherlands and Japan sanctions. Huawei apparently went as far as transferring about a dozen patents to C Carrier, as well as letting C Carrier's elite engineers work directly on the sites. You know, and and to have it is, you know, to kind of like say what it is as well. Um, during COVID, there were a lot of uh, examples. I, I know the FBI was releasing kind of documents uh, that there were um, basically CCP agents um, in mainly academia. Um, some media and some financial institutions, right? They had a whole board on the FBI's kind of most wanted list for it. I thought it was interesting. And I, I think this level of corporate or this level of espionage also, you know, kind of resides in this corporate layer as well, right? Um, if they have ways they can talk to people, um, you know, who work in lithography and are at the top of, say, like ASML or something like that, although I would suppose uh, that that's pretty, you know, secure, right? Um, you know, there's there's no reason that they couldn't uh, kind of replicate something, even if it's not as good, right? Still stay uh, ahead of where they would have been, you know, had they um, uh, essentially not done it, right? If they just kind of laid down and took uh, the bans, essentially. Uh, Bloomberg sources claim that Huawei has hired several former employees of digital lithography specialist ASML to work on this breakthrough. I would. It's kind of amazing again that there's not like a non-compete with that. Um, I don't. I don't know if they're just kind of doing that offhand and not worrying about uh, kind of you know. Implications abroad, you know, if they're in China, I'm supposing nothing would really touch them that way. But still, uh, to work on this breakthrough, the result so far is allegedly the 7 nanometer high silicon Kirin 9000S processor. And that was what uh, was being used in the Huawei phones that kind of, um, you know, blew the lid off recently when it was released. And that's the Mate 60 Pro. So it's interesting to see this kind of moving forward. And if in the future we will have to compete uh, with China on a chip level, you know, that's such a major driver, uh, not only of technological innovation in the West, um, but also of, of profit in a lot of these companies as well. So I think that's kind of interesting and important to note just on like a macro level uh, in general. We'll talk some more about Disney. We'll move over to here. We're trading at 92.50. A lot of people were contributing kind of the downtick we saw recently uh, to Elon Musk's comments directed at Bob Iger, uh, hurling some expletives at him. It's interesting, right? So Bob Iger's back, obviously. Are we still on here? Yeah, okay, perfect. The mic made a noise. Uh, he's back on here and talking essentially about what they need to do to kind of pivot going forward, right? So their movies have made huge amounts of income, you know, talking with uh, Star Wars and Marvel. He's saying that we've traditionally, we as in Disney, have been traditionally too focused 
on getting a message across and not storytelling, which I think is a unique pivot, especially for a company as large as Disney in this kind of cultural climate. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back for a short segment. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Let's take a look here. We have the uh, ES Mini trading at 0.49% up. Uh, the Russell Futures is up 2.95%. NQ up 0.16%. Kind of just a little bit sideways from where we were uh, at the beginning of the uh, programming, but we're going to be up for the day if we close that way. Um, it's pretty interesting movements and everything. Um, I, I wonder, yeah, I'm curious if we're going to see a pullback like next week going in. Obviously, if consumer spending is going to continue to go up as it's projected from the articles you read earlier, um, you might see a nice rally in through the, uh, the rest of the year, especially if people really are shelling out uh, that much cash. Before we went back, Excuse me, before we went to the break, uh, we were talking about Disney a little bit in a new pivot that Bob Iger is trying to go towards. Um, he basically said that the movies have been far too focused on messaging, right? So getting across um, some certain kind of cultural concept and not the traditional storytelling, right? Which, again, I think is actually a, a pretty, um, you know, it's got some chutzpah, I guess, right? Uh, to kind of say that in this, um, you know, kind of setting. We've seen, especially for the past few years, uh, really trying to push a certain um, kind of, uh, you know, cultural ideas and everything like that. And that's been uh, lauded and criticized by a lot of different people. So you have Iger kind of sitting here, and we're going to pivot back, is what he's saying, uh, to better storytelling. 
He said that creators lost sight of what their number one objective needed to be. It goes, we have to entertain first, and then, you know, messages comes later. That's not, uh, you know, that's not what Disney's supposed to be, right? It's just storytelling. And so I'm interested to see if kind of these, like, endeavors will actually, you know, put a floor back under Disney. Um, obviously, there's a lot of issues going on with arguments between uh, the Florida governor, and that had such political overtones with it, uh, obviously. And then people criticize a lot of the movies for having certain political overtones, whatever those may be. Um, and uh, I don't know how much that actually, you know, kind of plays into Disney stock being sold off, but, it, you know, it is to say we're trading at 95 from a high of, you know, the, the high 100s. So be interesting to see if that pivot pays off in the next five years or something like that. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. Tom will be back Monday. I hope you all have a great and safe weekend. And if you're somewhere where it's cold, stay warm. In Florida, just hang in there. We'll get it there soon. Folks, have a great weekend.